Good morning. Well, after I was finishing my meditation up last night, I decided to look at the calendar and it changed on me. Apparently, Memorial Day is next Monday, not tomorrow. So, I may be a little early with this message, but I still wanted to share it. With that holiday coming up, I thought back to my first significant memory associated with fallen American soldiers. Back in eighth grade, my entire class was given the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. and do some sightseeing. The most solemn part of the trip that was, was visiting the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which is a memorial for all the unidentified parish servicemen and women who served the United States military. There is nothing like being near the tomb and viewing it for the very first time. It was so hard to put into words that instead of trying to put it into words, I just recommend you go and experience it for yourselves. But for me, this was not the most significant moment. For me, the most significant for me was viewing the memorial commonly known as the wall. The Vietnam War Memorial is not the largest nor the most impressive piece of architecture in Washington, D.C., but I think it is the most unique. Made of two walls, both 246 feet and 8 inches long, the wall contains 58,281 names on it as of this month, all of whom gave their lives for the American cause in Vietnam. I believe this memorial to be the most significant because it is the one that you don't just observe with your eyes. You can walk right up and touch it. I watched numerous people go column by column, row by row, name by name, trying to find the name of a loved one. Then they may take a piece of paper and a pencil try and shade over the name to get a stencil of it. Then they walk away some more emotional than others. But they still remember. That's the intent of a memorial. To make sure that we remember and appreciate the past. The most impressive memorials are the ones that can accomplish this in the simplest of ways. Therefore, I would suggest that the most profound and effective memorial we partake in are these emblems on this table. Jesus knew we are forgetful creatures. So, on the night before his sacrifice, Jesus took a loaf of unleavened bread and a cup of wine and said to his disciples, This is my body and my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Communion was established so that we would never and could never forget what he did for us. It is an interactive experience as communion uses all five of our senses. We see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, and even hear it as the bread is crushed in our mouths. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, Paul calls it a participation in the body and blood of Christ. It is symbolic, as Jesus states, the bread and the juice is his body and blood. It is, it is portable, as you could partake in it anywhere, not just within these walls during this hour, on this one day of a week. It is permanent. Jesus said to the apostles, I will not drink of this cup again until I drink of it again in my Father's kingdom. The communion memorial has lasted over 20 centuries and will continue to be practiced for all of eternity. It is profound as there is something deeply spiritual that happens when we partake in this act with the right spirit. In John chapter 6, verses 55 and 56, it says, or Jesus says, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Admittedly, I am not an expert on communion as much as anyone else could be because I know I couldn't fully understand everything to do with communion. When you take in this communion today, I ask you to close your eyes and visualize the empty cross. Look closely and see your name etched into it. 
For it is not because you died there, but as Jesus hung on the cross to save us from our sins. Gentlemen, 